Hey yo, it's the Mayo Show with Brett Mayerson. All right, everyone, welcome to episode nine of the Mayo Show. I'm your host, Brett Mayerson. We talk to people from all walks of life. We've talked to some very interesting people on the show, but if you want to know what reality TV is like and working in it is like, you're probably going to hear it today. Our guest today is my good friend, Brianna Cooper, um, proud alumni of Penn State. And she is she is working currently as an associate producer on the hit reality show, 90 Day Fiance. So Brianna, what's up? Yeah, hey, thank you so much for having me come on. It's I have a fun job and I love to talk. Of course. So let's talk a little bit about your journey to where how you got to the job. So obviously, I mean, you and so for those of you who are listening, um, when this comes out, um, Brianna and I met in LA. Um, we happened to be interning at the same company and we just went in on different days and we had no idea that we both worked there until like one day. So she doesn't live too far from me in Jersey. Yeah, small um, world. But, Yes. So what was exactly your major at Penn State? So I majored in film production. Um, film production. Okay. So definitely being an associate producer is along the lines of what I wanted to do. Um, but going into college, I didn't really know that I wanted to do that. I went in undecided. Um, Penn State is huge. It has so many opportunities. So I kind of went in and said, you know what? We're going to see where this takes me. And freshman year of college, I... Uh, took one class, like one entry to major class and everything that I kind of thought was interesting. There was a dog. <laughs> um, so I took a film class. I took a criminology class. I took <laughs> you Zoe. Keep going. Just keep going, it's fine. <laughs> um, I took criminology class. I took an astronomy class. I mean, I was all over the place. Um, and then I kind of found out about this Penn State program, which would take me out to LA, which brings us to where we ended up meeting. Mm -hmm. And I ran with it. I was like, you know what, this is it. I'm gonna do film and I'm going to take advantage of everything that this big school can offer me. And we'll go from there. And it's brought me to where I am today. So I'd say it worked out pretty well. Awesome. So did you start off as a PA? I don't remember what you said, or did you go right to associate producer? I started as a PA. Okay, um, that's right. I knew you yep. said something like that over dinner the other day. So I just wanted to make sure that was true. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I graduated May, 2020 during COVID. So it took months to get a job. They're just all TV production was shut down. I spent months networking and everyone was like, oh yeah, you sound great. I'd love to help you, but we're not shooting. Um, so finally I met another production assistant who ended up then a week later, month later, told me that there was an opening for the exact same job. So I started off as the PA and then in less than a year, kind of bumped my way up to associate producer. Wow. Less than a year. So yeah. associate producer. So let's tell people about what that role really entails. Cause especially on reality TV. Um, it's, you're not a PA, so you're still doing a lot of dirty work, right? But you're just not doing what the PAs do, where it's like, hey, go get the coffee or anything like that. You're actually, you feel like you're contributing more to the, like, what's the word? More like the action of the show and the facilitation of the show. Oh, yeah. I mean, now as an associate producer, I kind of contribute to every aspect of the show. So I start off planning the shoots with the team. And if they say we want a family fun activity in blah, 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 Morristown, New Jersey, I look up family fun activities in this area. I pitch them. The team tells me what they like. I go ahead and release it. Um, then we go ahead with our shoot. We film the places that I was able to release, the places I choose. And then, you know, to kind of fast forward after all that to post-production. Now I see it, you know, I'm looking at our first episode, like, I chose all of these places. I made this episode what it is. Um, you know, had I not found, let's say, Sky Zone, you know, some kind of trampoline park, the shoot would have been completely different. The scene would be different. So definitely I have, my finger is a little bit in everything. It's really awesome. Awesome. Love to hear that. That always makes you feel good when you're like, I did that. Or yeah. someone else and I both did that, but part of me is in there. Yes. And it definitely does give you some satisfaction for sure. Yeah. Um, so 
you're working in reality TV, which, you know, I'm sure there's so many people watching reality TV nowadays. I mean, for people who don't know what that is, reality TV is examples like Real Housewives or 90 Day Fiance, which you're on. Um, some of the shows you might have watched growing up, like Cake Boss, stuff like that. That's all reality TV or otherwise known as unscripted. So yeah. we discussed this the other day. It's not really scripted, so to say. It's like a scripted scenario, but they're not remembering lines, right? So the situations are all real. The couples are all real. They're, they're real relationships that sometimes lead to marriage, sometimes don't lead to marriage. And that's why it's so real, because when we're dealing with real people, real things come up. You know, we need to cancel because something happens, or we need to quick fly a producer out because something happens. Um, it's all real in that aspect, you know, but in the sense of if you were to film me for 90 straight days, my life would be a little bit boring. Um, you know, <laughs> every minute of my day and every day of my week is not jam packed with activity. And I see every family member all the time. So that if you were to say is, you know, the little bit more forced is we need the action. So um, we never, ever tell them what to do. We never tell them what to say, but um, we are not there for a straight 90 days to film you and say, okay, do something. Um, you know, we kind of need to say, all right, we're going to go to dinner reservation with your siblings and see what happens. So it's more of a situation like that, just because people's lives are not that interesting. So you need snippets here and there. Oh yeah. If you did me for 90 days, my life would be so boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wake up, yeah. have breakfast. Wake work. up, have breakfast, go yeah. to work. And then afterwards it's like, oh, that's it. You're not yeah. that cool. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I went to a ball game today. Oh, it's not that cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So working in reality TV, like from work, from your perspective, because people, you know, when they see reality TV shows, all they think of are the people on the show. So where it's, we could still call them characters, I guess, even though they're real people. Um, but that's all they think of. They're like, oh, I love that person. or oh, I love that guy. They're so funny on TV. But they never think of the people who are actually putting on the show and who have to deal with all this crap and bullshit that is going on behind the scenes to get people riled up in a, you know, a money shot for TV. So what's that? aspect of it like because obviously you probably have to I mean people I've heard producers in interviews on line talk about if they're on a show like the Jersey Shore they just get them liquored up and talk to them behind talk to people behind their backs about what someone said about them and then it gets them riled up and then that makes for good ratings mm -hmm. so is that something that happens a lot on your show or in reality TV in general I should say um since this is the only reality TV show that I've done I guess it's really the only one that I can say for sure happens this way, <laughs> but um, we use all real things. So, you know, we'll never lie to them. We never do anything of that sort at all, but um, kind of like any family dynamic, you don't always know what's going on in everybody's lives. So um, sometimes we'll just drop a hint of something that maybe the cast hasn't told the rest of their family yet. Um, so not that we're trying to create a problem, but we know that when that conversation will come up naturally as a family around the dinner table, um, it's going to wreak a little havoc. So we just tell them, so the havoc kind of happens while we're there. Um, so that's the kind of sense, you know, we don't get anybody liquored up like Jersey Shore, but of <laughs> course on that show, that was the purpose of the show. You know, the drunker they were, the dumber they were, they did crazy things. So, you know, that was probably, I don't know this for sure. That was probably in their contract. You know, you're going to get drunk all the time and we're going to film the dumb things you do. Don't quote us on this, guys. We don't want to get sued, <laughs> but I'm just saying that could be a scenario. Um, <laughs> it could be. Um, so basically you tell these people, you're like, hey, this is going to come up, bring it up early. And they'll, they'll like, I'll bring it up whatever I want, but then they happen to bring it up early because they're probably like, oh, it's, I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah. So in that way, like we'll say, you know, at this dinner, maybe we could talk about this upcoming thing. So somehow in their daily conversation, then we'll be like, okay, make sure you get to it. 
Um, you know, which is why some couples, some families are easier to film with than others. Um, Cause some families are much more reserved and some families talk about everything. So, you know, when they naturally just have a great banter back and forth, then, you know, we never have to interject and say, don't forget, we're here to talk about something for a reason. Um, and it just kind of happens as their family kind of unravels. <laughs> Love that. So behind the scenes, when you see these people, like I should say, what kind of people volunteer for shows like this? Because I always say to myself, like when I see a show like The Housewives or other reality shows, I'm like, who volunteers themselves to have their life just depicted on TV and just wants everyone to know who they are so that when they're walking on the street, people bother them? Like, who, yeah. like, what are these people like? I mean, it's not easy to kind of throw yourself in. You know, a lot of, I'd say, traditional actors kind of started as kids. So they're used to it a little bit. Maybe their parents were famous. Like, they're kind of used to it. Um, but in this situation, these real people all of a sudden at 20, 30, 70 years old, boom, famous. And like, it's a complete lifestyle change. You know, I've, you know, seen in a transcript where somebody like in casual conversation mentioned their exact town that they lived in. They're like, no, 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 please don't say that. Which <laughs> we would never put that in the episode. <laughs> but she was like, no, no, please. Somebody will show up. So of course, we're never going to tell people, you know, your exact address and we blur things on the show for a reason. We blur house numbers because we don't want people showing up. You know, it's not like you're driving through the Hollywood Hills and there's quite literally a map of where famous people live and you could show up and just look at their gate whenever you want. Um, we don't do that to these people. They don't want that. So they try to keep to their normal lives and just all of a sudden have to adjust to this newfound fame. Jesus. So you're saying some of these people might have done acting in some capacity when they were kids, but like they didn't Not, intend, yeah, they didn't intend to be famous and now they're famous. I'd say no, not for like reality TV stars, like a traditional, like if you would say Ben Savage, um, you know, obviously he was in stuff as a kid, now grew up and is an actor. So he's used to that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, in the more like scripted TVs, movies that we all go to the theaters and see. But then reality is the complete opposite. So they kind of, their life changes with a snap of a finger. Um, so it's so, so different that now all of a sudden the first episode airs and their Instagram followers are through the roof. Um, where they were a nobody going to their job like they always did and now they've become so much more than that it's insane how people get famous off these shows so yeah have you ever witnessed this too I really want to know have you ever witnessed where someone acts like a total jerk on camera for the show and then you talk to them after filming and you're like that is not what they are like as a person like at all like they are genuinely a really good person they're just like playing it for the screen I think that a lot of times reality tv does their tell-alls at the end and that is always the best way to see how they really are as a person um, because they're truly interacting with each other and you know the conversation isn't so forced at the dinner table you know cameras are rolling and you need to talk about this now um so you know that's in all shows you know my dad loves deadliest catch and um, oh that's, a, that's an old school show um they still make new episodes my dad loves it i, I can't it believe all. it's still on the air yeah people like my dad um <sighs> love discovery and they're you know river monsters and stuff like that oh yeah but they also have the, I don't know what all of the shows call it, 90 Day Fiance calls it the tell-all. Um, so kind of the reunion episode. And that's the best way to really see their personalities. So I remember when I was on the first, my first season of 90 Day Fiance, it was season eight. And a lot of the comments that we were getting on Twitter after the tell-all was, wow, she's so much nicer than I thought. Wow, she's so much meaner than I thought. Um, because that's their realest moment. 
is, you know, kind of when they're sitting in a relaxed setting and talking about it after the fact. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Love is Blind, but I just watched the second season of that and same kind of thing. Like you're watching the tell all and like certain people were much friendlier than you would have thought and other people couldn't stand each other at all. And it's, you know, it's always different. Of course, somebody acts different in front of a camera. I'm probably speaking more clearly now than I would if we were just out to dinner. Um, so those little things, they make a, a little bit of a difference. It's just so insane to think about that they're like totally different off camera. Like you think of a person like, I don't know, like the people from Cake Boss and like people say that rumor had they had a reputation where they actually weren't so nice off camera oh, like really? yeah like I mean I heard I've heard that on numerous occasions from people I'm not trying to get sued guys but I'm just saying like it's like something like that like you might encounter someone who really is a jerk in real life but on camera they seem like such a sweetheart and they like win you over but I just find that so fascinating about reality nowadays and so what channel is 90 Day Fiance on that's what I want TLC so it's TLC so TLC is still like the king of reality shows right now I would probably say so. I mean, and even my company is Sharp Entertainment. We do all reality shows. Um, most of them are TLC, some, you know, a lot of house shows or HGTV. That's all reality too. So, um, and now with Netflix, there's so many reality shows that have come out that it's, there's so many options for all the reality TV lovers out there. So it's not just TLC anymore. That's so crazy. So if for TLC, so is your show also available on streaming too? Yes, it's on Discovery Plus. Discovery Plus, of course it is. It's always somewhere. The reality yeah. shows are always somewhere else. That's oh, so yeah. crazy. So I should ask you this. I remember you told me how you were contacted at 1.30 in the morning or something one time. What is yeah. the, I'm sure this, that was not the craziest thing. What was the craziest thing you've had to do while working in reality TV? Um, I would say that, uh, one night I was laying in bed and about one o'clock in the morning, I get a phone call from our producer on the other side of the world. And he said, we need a flight from America to the other side of the world. Now we are flying them out in the morning and what? it's currently 1am and they were like, we need a flight at nine. What? So what? Um, that's the crazy thing. You know, like I said, it's reality TV. It's real stuff happens. We need to fly around the world in a night. We need to buy a flight, book a flight, get everyone's bags packed and out the door. Jesus. Um, so, you know, although my day kind of has set hours, I'm on the clock all the time because things happen. Jesus. I'm just imagining you getting that call. So wait, where were they flying? They were flying to one of the Asian countries. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to exactly say because our cast is not revealed, but they were they were going all the way from America to for a 25 hour flight or something all the way to the other side of the world. Crazy. So were um, they calling you from LA? Because they called you at 1 a.m. No, they called me from India. Oh. Um, so our producers, when we film in other countries, they kind of bounce around, you know, we have a set of producers that are always going, you know, we film in India, we film in Asia, we film, well, obviously India is in Asia, um, but we film anywhere in Europe, we film in Africa, all over. And we kind of have a few set of producers that are always around that area um, and always do our international shoots. So he calls on WhatsApp, of course, because he's across the world. And he's like, quick, quick, quick we need a flight and I'm going to fly there tomorrow too. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, He's like, here's the corporate credit card number, book it now. <laughs> yeah, you just, you never know. It's fun and exciting and it's tiring, you know? So at one o'clock in the morning, we're trying to book flights and we have to get up for work the next day, but it's fun. It's kind of a rush for me. So I don't mind it too much. <laughs> Hey, I mean, maybe one day you'll be like the director on one of these shows one day and you'll be like, all right, I get to call the shots now. <laughs> but, yeah. So um, who is the craziest person you've had to work with on this show? So you did season eight. I'm guessing this is nine now, right? Or is this 10? 
So I've bounced around a lot um, because 90 Day Fiance has so many different spinoffs. So I did 90 Day Fiance season eight, which aired last, sometime last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did 90 Day the Other Way, which is where Americans go to other countries. Um, and then we have Happily Ever After, which is like a, where are they now? Mm-hmm. Um, so they're all married and stuff. And this is the, you know, after the 90 days, the ne- very next year, a few years later, um, kind of what's, what's going on. So I did that season twice and that's now the show that I'm associate producer on. Wow. So you're, di- so you're doing, uh, the one that like the happily ever after one, that's what yeah. you're associate producer one. Yeah. So you see them a few, you see them a few years later. So it's kind of like what, it's kind of like when you have a show where it's just like kind of like a reunion, but it's more of like what happened in the future. So it's like the end of a movie credit or it's about a true story. And it's like, so-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, And we have couples that have been on there for years um, because they've got a lot going on. They have an interesting story. They want to do it. So you know, as long as they still are willing to, you know, spend so much of their time and film with us and, you know, let us constantly invade their families and stuff, then we love to have them because the viewers love it. They have favorite couples and we run with it. Was there ever a couple on this show because it's like, where are they now that clearly did not work out? And it's like really awkward to film and you're like, oh boy, I really don't want to bring up this subject for them to like talk about. Yeah, I mean, last season that we had worked on, um, a couple did get divorced during our season. And, um, you know, because they're real, you know, our show is happily ever after question mark. Uh, Because are they happy? Are they not happy? And that couple wasn't happy and we kind of needed to film their divorce as it was unfolding which is a really really bad time um but you know they were troopers they went with it and the tell-all you know if you watched it they didn't sit together but you know for the sake of the show they did great they still (laughs) you know were like you know what we're on this show we're gonna power through it together and it worked out great so when you're a reality TV star, I should say, even though you're not like, you know, a scripted character, are you pay- are you getting paid as a person, as a cast member to be on that? Or so it's like, it's kind of like you're an actor or an actress, but you're like not. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, because there's always cost involved with things. So, mm-hmm. you know, the cast members are compensated. It's not a, a six figure job, but you know, they, it's not what you'd find on like a hit TV show. Yeah. Being compensated by. It's not like that. Yeah. But, you know, we, you do get paid for us to completely invade your lives and always be around and know everything about you and basically become part of your family, even though you're never going to see us again after a season. Yes. I mean, one of our <laughs> cast members has been with us for years. And when, especially on Happily Ever After, since all of the couples have been here before, um, we try to keep the same producer with them so they're comfortable. Um, and I was listening to the footage the other day and they made some kind of joke about, oh, I just call him family now because they're together all the time and they've been together for years. Um, Jesus. you know, the kids were calling him uncle because they're just, they, the kids grow up with them. So, you know, we, we definitely make our mark. <laughs> Jesus it's so interesting to hear like what happens on the inside of reality tv because like you know when you're watching when you're younger you're just like oh this is happening like in the moment but then you hear like what happens like how the producers have to escalate things like to say talk about this now make sure you get this topic out in order for good content is like absolutely crazy and I'm sure the editing is probably an even tougher process because of how much comes out and you're like, well, what do we want to put on TV and what do we not want to put on TV? Yeah. I mean, just like any documentary work, the story is made in post-production. So we film for 
eight straight hours. The, ed the editors get the footage and they say, okay, where's the story in this? Um, and that's exactly what you do with a documentary. Um, I did worked on a few of them in college and it was kind of the same deal. You sit there with your camera and interview your subject and you have no idea what they're going to say. Um, they could say something to help you. They could say something to completely throw you off. And that's where the story is made in post-production because, you know, in documentary, in reality TV, there's that realism to it, of course. So you're trying to find the right story when you don't even know the story. You know, if I ask, you know, let's say we're doing a scripted TV show, a sitcom on NBC, the script is written. You know how character A met character B. We don't know that. So we literally sit you in an interview chair and say, okay, tell me how you met. And we don't know what the answer is going to be. So if they say something super, super cool, like I jumped out of a plane and then I was in the hospital and then that was my nurse and we fell in love, we're super in love. <laughs> that might happen. Or they could say, oh yeah, we met on a travel app. You just don't know. So the story is kind of formed based on what they say and what their stories are. What was the craziest story? Now that you've said that, what was the craziest story you heard of how the couple met? <sighs> You hear a lot. I was a fan of the show even before I worked on it. Um, there's two of the most common ones definitely is met on a travel app mm -hmm. and met while I was on vacation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like off the top of my head, I can't think of too many other ones. I was ready for you to say, so well, I was like doing this crazy thing on the beach and they walked up to me and like I was waiting for something like that. Yeah, no, I guess because it's they all kind of loop in together like yeah they were on a family vacation and this guy came along yeah saw him at the uh, bar <laughs> yeah yeah um kind of as simple as that because like they're real people they're not they could be but they're not dropping out of planes and it's not a scripted movie so you know it's not the hottest nurse you've ever seen comes walking by and i just had to marry them they're real people you know how did i meet my boyfriend i ran into him at the bar. Um, I worked with him, you know, kind of knew who he was. It's kind of boring. Yeah. So, you know, their real lives are the same way. So interesting to me. Well, how many, first of all, how many of your friends from college, because I know that college kids are so into reality TV shows, like I see it myself. Um, how many of your friends from college are just bombarding you with questions about what, the, what it's like to work on the show right now? I do. I get a lot of questions from my friends. Um, I also get a lot of questions from like middle-aged couples, you know, like I'll be taking the dog for a walk and the neighbor who's got to be 50, 60 years old is always like, okay, so tell me about this one. So tell me this. So is this the deal with this one? And I was like, they love it. You know, I found because I'm always making phone calls, trying to make reservations for places. And you always hear, oh, my mom will be so excited about this. <laughs> so um, we have a huge audience anywhere from young in college to these middle-aged adults. They love it. <laughs> love to hear that. Yeah. Love that. So middle-aged adults loving it. I love how, I find it funny how reality TV is still a thing. Cause I always thought while I was in college, because of like what streaming was doing and how all these great scripted shows were coming out in documentaries, I always thought reality was going to die. And it never dies because there is always someone with a crazy idea, like a Married at First Sight or a 90 Day Fiance. There is always someone who has a creative idea like that. Yeah. And I don't know how these ideas keep popping up. Like, I don't know what's next. Like, for all we know, there could be a crazy one next where everyone wants to start watching. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. So is non TV Fiance, I know a lot of the reality TV shows we have here, a lot of them are actually like spinoffs of British shows. So like American Idol was a spinoff. Um, Love Island was a spinoff. Um, a lot, there's a lot of, America's Got Talent was Britain's Got Talent, um, X Factor. So is 90 Day Fiance a spinoff of another show or is that completely original in America? As far as I know, I think it's completely original to hear. Um, one of my first executive producers was on the very, very first team when they built the show. 
And he never seemed to mention if the idea came from anywhere else. So I'm going to say that it was born here. That's pretty awesome, actually, because it's just so funny to think of like all the best shows here were shows maybe without the same name mm -hmm. in another country. Like The Office was originally British. Yeah. And then it was brought here. So it's just so fascinating to think like this is this is what we think of in America. Let's do a 90 day fiance. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we think of here. No, no singing, no nothing. We're going to have a 90 day fiance. Yeah. So what would I guess you think? Go for I it. was just thinking, so of course it would have to be made here because the idea of 90 day fiance, what that means is the K-1 visa process. So that's all about um, somebody from a foreign country coming to America with their significant other and having 90 days to get married on that uh, fiance visa or else they have to go back if they don't get married in time, something happens, blah, blah, blah. Um, so of course that would have to be an American show because we have that 90 day visa. Yes, we do. You are right. I always forget about that. Immigration stuff like that is so hard. Um, yeah, I've learned so much from our show, you know, things that I never thought of. Um, but like I knew nothing about visas and, you know, the immigration system and, and all that type of stuff. But, you know, they say you can't believe everything you read. You can't believe everything you see on reality TV. But, you know, there's definitely stuff that I didn't know. And now I've learned. Yeah, exactly. So I want to ask you this before we wrap up. What is yeah. the what is the coolest experience you've had on this show? Because working in reality TV, although it could definitely be exhausting from what you've said, it is it is also kind of cool. Like you're working on something that millions of people are watching and you're a part of it. So what is the coolest experience you've had? Oh, wow. It's hard to say because I work from home. So, you know, my every day is kind of this room. Um, but I'd say the most memorable moment that I had was seeing my credit on the TV for the first time. Um, oh, wow. That was the most surreal moment. Um, I kind of started working on the show a little bit into post-production. So I wasn't in all the beginning credits and I just kind of sat there every Sunday and I knew when it was coming. So I was like, you know what? I never watched the show live. I have to watch it today. Um, and it was the craziest moment. That was the, I made it. You know, everything that I've done, all the internships, all the running around, the staying up all night, 1 a.m. phone calls, it was worth it. You know, I'm on TV, I'm on IMDb, like all of these things that were a dream to me. You know, they're a dream to someone. Um, it became real. <laughs> Did your parents start crying when they saw the credit? I actually wasn't even home. So. Oh, I was really hoping for you to go, my mom was bawling. Like I was yeah. really hoping you'd say that. No, I definitely cried. Um, I'm sure my parents were watching it at home too. So I wouldn't be surprised if they cried about it. Um, They'll never admit it. But, no, <laughs> um, but it was a huge moment. You know, I kind of put a screenshot of it up on Facebook and I was like, hey, hey, look, mom, I made it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so like that was just something that, I don't know when I'll ever feel that sense of accomplishment again, that first moment of I've made it. <laughs> Love that. So, I mean, it feel like, I mean, you'll probably will feel it again because I feel like as your roles move up for whatever shows you work on, like, I feel like that's always going to make you feel good, which is, it's always nice to see your name on a screen. Yeah. Like during a major show. And especially yeah. like, it's not like some low budget show that for some reason is still on TV it's, you know, a show like that, which is on a network that is viewed by a lot of people because people like reality TV. And it's, you know, that a lot of people know your name now. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. I guess this upcoming season, my credit will say associate producer, which is huge. Um, so I hope that the feeling doesn't wear off, but exactly. the first one was the best. <laughs> Love that. All right. That'll be it for today's episode nine of The Mayo Show. You could follow us on Instagram at The Mayo Show. And also find us on, and also you can find us on YouTube at The Mayo Show with Brett Mayerson. And also we drop every single Friday on Spotify at 4 p.m. You can find every episode. So Brianna, if you're looking for this episode, that's when you are going to be able to listen to it. 
So Instagram, once again, the underscore Mayo Show. YouTube, the Mayo Show with Brett Mayerson. If you want to see the video, just audio is on Spotify. Brianna, thank you so much for coming. I really enjoy it. Thank and, you so uh, much. Awesome. Uh, also, uh, what's your Instagram so people could follow you? It's at Brie Koopa. So <laughs> B-R-I. I knew what it was. I just wanted you to say it out loud. Oh, Koopa. Yeah. Um, actually, one of my high school friends made that. And the password was, I love her name. It still is. Like I've never, <laughs> never changed it. <laughs> love that. So at B-R-I-C-O-O-P-A-H on Instagram at Brie Koopa, if you want to follow her, because I'm sure she's going to post parts of her journey if you want to follow her. So you could follow her there. And that is it for today. Thank you everyone for listening. Really appreciate it. Follow us on social media. Take a listen. You can leave me comments if you want. I don't care if you start hating this show. Go for it. Tell me if what I could improve. All right. Thank you again so much, Brianna. And take care, everybody.